Uh, so firstly, congratulations to our uh, graduates from 2020. Yeah. guys here but uh, normally we, we do this as a big group and everything but obviously um, because of what's going on this is a bit of a weird one but um, and I normally don't write stuff out but I wrote stuff out because I didn't know what to do so um, so here we go congratulations you guys um, hindsight maybe 2020 but each of you guys and each of you guys had the foresight to think of 2020 before you guys came here you guys made it you finished oh my god it seemed like at times you weren't gonna finish but you finished so that's great that's awesome congratulations you guys all those paper assignments all those story maps that wouldn't render all that you know those stats that didn't work all that capstone data all those lawn policy debates all the things all the things all the things all the things it's all done it's all over uh, you can breathe easy now um, You made some crappy decisions. You made some crappy decisions. You made some fantastic decisions. You guys made new friends. And most importantly, you guys gained a ton of skills. You might not see that right now, but when you reflect back on this time, all of these classes, all these experiences are gonna be incredibly valuable for you going forward in this crazy world um, that we are in. We're at the dawn of a new decade. You're at the dawn of a new chapter in this life of yours. And we are all very proud of you guys. We're all so happy for you and so proud of all the stuff you guys have done. Even when you've been bugging us, even when you turn your stuff in late, it's done <laughs> and we're on to the next chapter. And before you know it, 2020 is already gonna be in the rear view mirror. 2020 is gonna be hindsight. Not just a year, but a memory. Everyone's journey through college, to college and through college is unique. And uh, that, that's, that's true for every year, anytime anybody's ever gone to school, all of that. But, but um, we all have challenges, we all have unforeseen hiccups. But uh, you know, to be, totally faith, to be totally honest, this year's journey for you guys has been a bit more unusual than most, a bit more uh, full of challenges than most. From uh, the President of the United States saying neo-Nazis are very good people, to the Thomas Fire, which was at the time the largest fire to ever strike California. Unfortunately, now it's only the second largest, right? But, you know, for weeks and weeks and weeks, the insanity of borderline, while we're in the midst of the Hill Fire and Woolsey Fire, obviously the, the, the current failure of our leadership to prepare and deal with the pandemic, all of this stuff, Boom, 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 crazy, crazy, crazy. And you guys all persisted. You guys all made it through these crazy days and, and this crazy experience. And I would suggest that it's been an incredibly memorable journey. Everybody remembers their college journey, but you guys have a unique brand on yours. And in these speeches, I'm, I'm normally supposed to be, uh, you know, the future is bright and you know pat you on the butt and say you guys go get them right and all that kind of stuff and and possibilities are limited only by your imagination but you know as we've noticed things are not uh it's not a normal time right now. things are coin a scotsy things are out of balance at the moment quite literally um and so rather than just say you know go on graduates you guys can do great you guys need to help us get the balance back together. You guys need to help us have some more sure footing. And so we might call that our 2020 hindsight. You see, well, that, this is a thing. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's very intellectual. Um, most of you guys are incredibly anxious about this postgraduate life right now. Job market, everything, crazy, uncertainty, can't get answers, totally get it understandable very understandable but I would ask you guys in those moments of your stress to remember these last several years um, you guys arrived here two or four or uh, years ago <laughs> and you guys arrived in spectacular style you probably didn't always feel spectacular but you guys actually came at an amazing time um, 
when you came, almost every single one of you, if not every single one of you guys, had anxiety about your dreams. What am I gonna do for my career? Was this the right spot? Um, you had uncertainty about us. What about these, this campus, this place, these professors, this, this whole system? Was this really right for me? Was Channel Islands right for me? Was ESRM the fit for me? Um, and, and could this lead to a career that would be rewarding and all the things we'd like our, our lives to be? I would suggest that we were a good fit for you guys. We were a great fit for you guys. You belonged here. You belonged here and you still belong here. You and everybody listening, all your fellow graduates, you guys saw opportunities here and ESRM was wide open when you guys arrived. Um, you guys found a pathway to your future. As you look forward now and things look crazy and all that, remember that you had that anxiety back then too, right? In different forms and in different intensities, but you had it back then too and you made it. And I'm not naive. I know the job market is really, 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 really tight right now. Um, but you all have a very tangible set of skills because you chose ESRM and you actually are ready for this. So the rapids might be roaring, but we've shown you guys how to paddle. We really honestly have. And trust me when I say um, our, our friends and colleagues and your fellow students and other programs don't have as many paddles as you guys do. At times, ESRM seems really challenging and really hard, and my friends aren't doing this. Exactly, right? Exactly why we build these experiences for you guys, so that you're ready to paddle when the rapids roar in your ears and you get afraid of the water, right? We've given you the tools. Hindsight, 2020. See, theme, going back to the theme. I know. It's very, I thought it was very important last night when I wrote that. Um, <laughs> so everybody's currently fixated on this existing pandemic and the job market, but that's not really what I'm most worried about. The truth is that we all face much bigger challenges than even these, these crazy things that are staring us in the face right now. It's manifest in the nihilists, and the flat earthers and the forces of evil and all those people that seem to have gripped the reins in recent years um, and set their sight on this place, this place that you guys saw opportunity, the forces of badness set, see this place. They see the remnants of the biosphere. They see clean air. They see all these things as something that they would like to do something with. And we need to, and you need to do something about that. And as we speak, we have every crazy things, right? Russian bots and Silicon Valley algorithms and your crazy Uncle Javier, uh, you know, saying that environmental protection and acting responsibility is a fool's game or is for softies or is for losers or hippies or whatever the hell they say. They are fantastically right. We need you guys to take all these skills and to, and to respond to all of that silliness. So the forces of chaos, are really just forces of suicide and injustice. And um, they want you to become despondent. They want you to be bummed. They want you to be despairing. Do not let them win. Do not let them win. Um, simply put, screw that. You've all worked way too hard. Your families have worked way too hard for this. Um, we've all worked too hard. We're not gonna give in to the silliness, right? The silly baloneyness that we can't solve our problems, that things are gonna get worse, forget that. Um, whatever your career becomes, wherever you go, wherever this path takes you, you need to speak the truth when your employer, your boss, your friend says something stupid, right? Don't be an a-hole about it, but you need to speak truth to power. You are our future. You have to be the adult in the room, which is strange for me to say that, but yes, you guys have to be the adult in the room. Um, mind what you've learned, save you at will, said, said a very sage uh, little green guy at one point. Um, but the reality is we've actually been here before. I know right now it seems like this is unprecedented and nobody's ever had to do this before, but we have been here before. And as always, 
good judgment comes from experience, but experience comes from poor judgment. Problems lead to experience. The whole hindsight is 2020 thing, right? When I was younger, much younger than you guys, um, and I first started reading about things uh, that were wrong, I was really thrown for a loop for a long time. When I read about slavery, Jim Crow, suffragettes, robber barons, um, braceros, sedition acts, DDT, uh, all these things, internment camps here in California, what the hell, right? And I thought as a young person, I thought, how is it that those things, those bad things happened? Right, like, and, and happened not just for a week or a month, but, but went on for a long period of time. Um, and why weren't people more quick to deal with these evils and these injustices and these messed up things? Why didn't they solve it? And the answer um, for, to my younger self was what you see right before us right now in this quarantine in 2020. Today we see an imbalance of injustice um, in the forces and voices that would explain away kneeling on some man's throat for nine minutes straight while he can't breathe. It's going on right now. Cheering as we leave the Paris Accord, screaming for bailouts for our most polluting industries, um, rejecting science slash expert opinion slash good governance. Um, this very day, some ma mask-free people are demanding the right to infect each other with virus. Um, which they call fighting for freedom, right? And, uh, and that's just, it's just crazy. We know the vast majority of the public agrees with you guys. The vast majority of the public shares your concerns. The vast majority of the public wants to solve these problems. And they don't believe the crud that's being peddled by these forces of, of chaos and, and confusion and, uh, and, and messed upness. Um, but as we're seeing today, most or many people are afraid of confrontation. Many people don't want to engage, have those uncomfortable uh, discussions. And they're cowed by these thugs, quite honestly, who wear different uniforms and talk different ways, but um, that like the trajectory that we're on, that think it's okay to keep doing the, the things that we're doing. Many more, can pe many more people are content to let things go on because they think it's not going to affect them. They think that this is, this is a problem for other people. That's why these things continue on. And that thinking is quite frankly delusional. It is completely delusional. There's only two possible outcomes that can come from that, that not engaging with our problems. One is that we extend the pain and we extend the suffering and we extend the messed upness. The other is that we actually get defeated, which is also a possibility. And I would posit to you that neither of those is what we should do. And it's, and it's your careers that will address this uh, as we go on into the future. So you guys, you guys are our most recent crop of environmental professionals. You guys are our most recent crop of environmental scientists. Very cool. Um, and you need to step out into this scary world, right? Scary world of pandemics, scary world of all this, this other stuff. But I'll just finish up by saying this time is actually a gift as much as it doesn't seem like it is it's actually a gift right now this this past semester and all this stuff so two weeks ago president obama in his commencement speeches said that um this pandemic has fully and finally torn back the curtain of the idea that so many folks in charge know what they're doing a lot of them aren't even pretending to be in charge the gift is 2020 hindsight and that gift is that opportunity. You all have more knowledge than they do. You all have more technical abilities and skills than they do. It doesn't seem like it when you look at the newspaper. It doesn't seem like it when you look on social media. But you do. You all do. You have science. You have reason behind you. Um, and you guys have the power to engage and rectify it. Um, and you, just like we're talking about bending this curve, of this pandemic, yeah, we gotta do that. We also need to bend this sustainability curve and this justice curve in our planet. And we can see that right now much more clear than at any time. I've been, I've been teaching college students for 25 years. 
never seen a year like this. I've never seen it where it's so clearly laid out that if we keep doing the messed up stuff that we're doing, badness is gonna happen. And that truly is an opportunity and a gift for you guys. So, uh, to finish up, you guys should stay in touch. You guys are graduating, you're leaving, but you always have a place here with us. So if you wanna talk, you guys can reach out to us. If you guys need a letter of reference, you can reach out to us. If you wanna talk about, what do you guys think about this firm or that firm, you can talk to us. You can collaborate with us. You can pop back, you can stay in touch. Just because you're, you're physically leaving and going on does not mean that you're severing your relationship um, with ESRM and we're always here when you guys need a hand or a suggestion or even just a chat. So hindsight may be 2020, but each of you had the foresight to be here in 2020. And again, hot damn, you made it. Congratulations. <laughs> um, and so uh, I, I thought that I might have some type of libation in my hand, but I don't. But I have a virtual libation, so I want to raise my glass to all of you guys, to all of you guys, and say congratulations. Hindsight is 2020. I'm so happy you guys are part of the answer. Congratulations. Woo!